Hey there, Captains. It is Reen here again with a um, another recap of the Vassal World Cup. Just finished my second pod game. I thought I'd go ahead and cover it um, while it was fresh in mind. So here we go. Uh, for my second game, I was going against Paul. Uh, this is his fleet uh, here. It's an Imperialist. Uh, so we have an Imperial 2 with Admiral Mahdi, Director Karnik, or Krennic, Gunnery teams, early warning systems, point defense ion cannons, and spinal armaments. Uh, following that up, we have a victory two with Commander Beck, gunnery team, disposable capacitors, quad battery turrets, high or heavy ion emplacements, harrow, and engine techs. We have a Gazanti with Comsnet, and then Darth Vader and the TIE Defender, as well as uh, Captain Jonas and two aggressor assault fighters uh, for a list right at 400 points. Quick recap of my fleet. Uh, we have the Venator 2 with Clone Captain Zack, Baron Gunners, um, Svats, Electronic Countermeasures, External Racks, Link Turbo Laser Towers, and Tranquility. Uh, we also then have Bail Organa on a Venator 1 with Adi Gallia, Boarding Troopers, Intensify Firepower, External Racks, Link Turbo Laser Towers, and the Resolute title. We then have a pair of Peltas, both transport frigates, both with projection experts, one coming with parts resupply, one coming with munitions resupply, and Hondo. Uh, and that makes up my list. So we will jump right to the end of deployment. Right here. All right. Uh, so I had bid. I chose to go first in hopes that I could do some uh, good um, first last uh, attacks uh, throughout the course of the game. And I chose Paul's uh, contested outpost. Um, this was the deployment. Um, as you can see, the majority of the obstacles are on one far side out of the way. Uh, one debris field in front of me uh, and the station right here. Um, due to the way deployments worked with his squads and me going first, uh, I had to place everything down before Paul had to place both the Victory or the ISD-2. Um, so I just kind of slapped uh, these all down in a good position to basically contest the outposts, which is why um, I chose this objective. All right, so we'll just go to the next slide, show some thoughts here. Um, so kind of looking uh, at the game as we are setting dials up after deployment, this ISD-2 was super uh, well positioned. I was kind of hoping coming into the game that I would find a way to get both Venators um, like into close range of this ISD-2, and I can maybe kill it in a round or two before suffering too much damage. Um, I mean, his fleet has so much firepower here. I basically know I have to kill stuff quick, try and avoid front arcs as much as possible. So after deployment, um, I already know that I'm going to have to write these peltas off because this guy, this ISD is at three, and it's going to be swinging wide, I'm sure, to stay out of... Um, the Venator because he's happy at long range or medium range. These really need to be close. So might as well come out to the edge here. Um, probably kill both Peltas, which help keep the Venators alive. Um, so the Peltas I'm writing off, they'll do what they can. Uh, which means um, if I'm expecting the ISD to come like this, I want my vendors to come like this, so hopefully I can contest the outpost for uh, at least two turns, maybe three. And I'm hoping I can kill this Gazanti and this Victory in exchange for the two Peltas. Uh, I didn't do the math exactly, but I'm pretty sure if I lost both Peltas but killed these two and at least contested the station for a couple rounds, I might come out with a narrow uh, win because this is only 110 points, I believe, his... Uh, victory is close to 100 and plus the Gazanti. So if I can do that, I can maybe come out with a narrow win. Maybe I can take off a squad or two. Speaking of squads, this is the real punishment for going squadless. Um, normally I don't mind too much. I can um, kill key things or flak stuff down if I have to. But Jonas, 
uh, especially with these heavy hitters, means I'm probably not going to get to use um, Brace on either Pelta, which is going to decrease their survivability dramatically, and it also really stinks for Bale, which is right here. Um, Bale, if he's taking these shots and, like, guaranteed not going to get to Brace because no ECMs here, um, it's going to be a lot less tanky than a normal um, Venator. So I'm hoping that I'll like come in here with this Venator. I'll take some fire from like the victory, maybe a long red shot from this ISD two for like one round, and then hopefully I kill the victory, and then I'm in like the side arc of the ISD two, and I just have to like contend with the squads depending on how low I get from uh, these attacks. And then the tranquility will kind of come in underneath. Um, hopefully slip alongside the Venator, or the ISD-2. Help contest the outpost. Um, and potentially, depending if the Peltas get lucky or he rolls bad and I get like some ship damage in with the Peltas, it's not inconceivable that if I get like a good like front and side shot with um, the Sfat, that I could like cripple the ISD and like really force it off. So the path for victory here I was just really hoping to kill these two, don't lose a Venator, maybe pick up a squad, control the station a bit, come out with like a 6-5. Otherwise, I can't see myself doing any any better than that, based on the setup that we have here, because this ISD-2 is going to be just a mountain to try and climb over, especially with Mahdi. Alright, so with that, we'll get into the game. Alright, uh, I narrowed it down a bit. Uh, screen grab obviously because the uh, battle is much shorter so this is the end of round one you can see the isd3 or isd2 is coming in at speed three on the edge staying away from the venators getting ready to kill the peltas um currently this pelta is in red range this one is uh not um bale is being threatened by this victory already um, I did throw a Sfat token out. I might catch this Gazanti out. Uh, I kind of realized that this is a little out of position. Uh, these two like really like to work in tandem uh, to like focus fire something down. And right now, uh, this uh, Sfat Venator is not in position to help kill the victory. Uh, so Bale is going to have a lot of work in front of him. And as you can see, Jonas and Vader are held back in reserve ready to come in uh, get some damage on so this is end of one we'll go to the end of uh, two so end of two as you can see jonas came in he's generating accuracies against both peltas and um, the venator uh, for the actual round since this is the end jonas was just affecting this pelta and this venator but speaking of the venator you can see uh, we no longer have front shields or side shields um, and we're down to five hull. While this uh, victory has lost only three on the side, one on the front. Um, absolutely uh, devastating uh, how much firepower this thing can go, especially with uh, the heavy ion emplacements. Um, and like I said, I wasn't able to get a lot of chip damage uh, back in. I got a front shot to the side. Here, that's why there's no rear, no side shields. This one got chip damage into the front. Uh, this Venator managed to spat, and we got the accuracy for the scatter, but he just burnt the evade. Uh, just took a shield and a hull damage. Uh, actually, just think it updated there. And uh, for next round, uh, after seeing what's happened here, I know I'm in um, major trouble. Venator. It's supposed to be down some shields, uh, preferably not any hull, uh, and we're already like half hull, no shields left, um, and Jonas is there. So I know Bale has to go first, and the plan for Bale is uh, I can take one of his um, nav dials from Bale himself and do like a speed uh, two turn while I go like one in and then a double right click to the right and I'll end up like over here. That only works if I kill this uh, Gazanti, though. So we do have the side shot under the Gazanti, and we do have an excellent front shot. 
set up for um, this victory and we do have the squad token from Hondo to um, do um, boarding troopers. So I'm pretty confident that this victory is going to die next turn, uh, but I'm losing a Venator probably. And like I said, the only way that I could see myself winning is keeping both Venators alive and trading out the victory. So already, um, just looking at this, I know this Venator is dead. These Pelters are probably going to get cleaned up here during the turn. So it's like, how do I not get tabled? Because if these three fall and this ISD2 comes up like right here, it's very good. It's very good chance that I just get um, blasted here. Luckily, this one has ECM, so Jonas doesn't hurt as much. Um, but I already know by the end of this round that I am in deep trouble of being tabled. Uh, maybe I can do like a miracle attack. The only way that I won't lose this Venator is if I kill this Gazanti and like one shot this victory. Those were my outs for the round, uh, so we'll go ahead to the next uh, round here and we'll see what happened. So this is during the round. Uh, I took my first attack from the side to the front of the Gazanti, got four damage and um, no accuracies, so it lives. So already the plan of keeping this thing alive is falling. And then we do this front shot. Uh, and a lot of firepower here with x rax and a con fire dial. Uh, it's 12 damage. Uh, which, if you look at this thing, uh, it doesn't look too good at all. Uh, I think it actually, I might have caught it, uh, this uh, screen image during the attack, because it did have two shields uh, when I actually rolled this. So it was exactly enough to kill it. Um, if I had gotten an accuracy and 11 damage, I could have rammed it to death. Um, but unfortunately, no accuracy. Um, do do a ton of damage. He does pull a structure. So at the end of this attack, it gets down to four a hull, and we ram. Or five hull, and then we ram it down to four. Um, but it, it's absolutely terrible. This Venator is dying. These Peltas are dying. I got to somehow not get tabled, uh, try and save the game uh, with Tranquility. Luckily, it is Tranquility. So if any ship in my fleet was going to try and survive against this list, it's probably that. So I'll jump to the end of the round, or the end of the round here. Oops. Here we go. As you can see, it got <laughs> much, uh, much more cleaned up. So this is the end of round three. Uh, absolutely brutal here. Uh, lost the victory to a ram from the victory. Uh, lost the venator to a ram from the victory. Uh, that victory also killed a pelta before it could activate. Uh, the other pelta got like one damage to the shield on the side of this ISD because of Pedix. Um, we did kill the victory, but uh, as you can see, the shields have already been kind of stripped off Tranquility. We took a ram damage uh, from the ISD too. The only thing that's saving me here is the fact that I'm first player, so I can get into the side arc uh, of this ISD2, ISD hopefully. Uh, something I did that I'm not sure whether it mattered or not, or if I should have done differently, is I did throw the spat out the side. And this was after I had known that the Peltas were dying and stuff, and there's no real way I'm killing this, uh, ISD2, but I th still threw spat out the side. Uh, which means I'm going to be forced to shoot it. Um, in hindsight, not putting spat out, uh, so that I have more flak options might have been, uh, smarter. But I kind of needed to actually chip down squads because the only points that I'm going to get the rest of this game are this Kazanti, the station for one more round as I kind of like fly over here, and then maybe a squad or two. And the way this is going to work is I basically need to kill two squads and one activation because as soon as I kill one, um, Paul's probably going to realize that the Venator isn't dying and it's just best to save points and fly away. So I need to get like another turn of chip damage down. And for that reason, I was like, okay, it's probably fine if we don't flack. Because I need to do like, um, my plan was uh, like I'll LTT shoot 
Um, Jonas, or actually this turn, no, I got to kill this and kill this. But like one turn, I'm going to have to like LTT one ship or one squad to get down to like three health. And I'll like salvo and flak the other one and maybe get down to two health. I basically need both of these aces to be at one at three and one at two. And then hope that I kill both of them. One with an LTT shot and one with like a, a confire shot with a clone captain Zack up aside. So it's a very slim chance that I pull any points back. I'll, I'll be lucky to get one squad. But this is the end of round three, and game is basically decided here. There it is. All right, uh, end of round four. Uh, I'm just taking side shots um, from this uh, ISC2. Uh, got a little chip damage in. Uh, squads are just going to be annoying. Luckily, when I did see the way the game was going, normally I always have confires lined up on this Venator, but it actually swapped so that the last tur two turns were going to be um, repairs, uh, which ended up being pretty important. Um, so we take another side shot here. I know next round I can maybe start that plan of flacking squads. We'll go to see what happens. So this is the end of five. Uh, I got some pretty poor rolls uh, against Jonas. Um, so Jonas lives on the. He got LTT'd and took like one damage. Uh, Vader got like one damage from Flak, one damage from Salvo, and now Vader's uh, came in. Uh, this is actually after the refresh, uh, I believe. It is. Um, he came in with uh, Brace exhausted already and did another bombing run, and I salvaged him and got one more chip damage in to bring him down to two, uh, which means I can potentially kill him with LTT now. Still worth it for him because there is a chance, like, a Vader doesn't die. These two plus Jonas plus Vader might be able to chip enough damage in if I don't have, like, a repair set. And going for the table here... Uh, for the cost of maybe like one squad definitely worth it and that's what Paul decides to do so this is the end of round six uh, at the top of the round I flak Vader to death um, so just keeps Jonas out he flies around gets the station one more turn and uh, these ag uh, aggressors just stand out there uh, doesn't really matter of consequence so down to three shields and three hull, but the Venator survives uh, to fight another day. It's 7-4 uh, victory to Paul. So a moderate loss to me. I might still be able to make out a pod. We'll see how the rest of the games go. Um, but I did also want to highlight one other thing. And one of the best things I think about playing uh, online in, in Vassal, especially because you can do these log files. And something I recommend uh, other players do if they're not doing it already is uh, you can go back through your log files and you can try and find like things that you should have done differently. And this is going all the way back to turn two. Uh, in the actual game we played, um, I slowed down to one and I did a double click here at one, and that's how this Venator was like over here with an excellent. Uh, opportunity to do the boarding troopers and devastating front shot um, into this. Um, in hindsight, going through it, I did have this move up. I was considering it during the turn. Uh, I opted not to do it because I was pretty sure I was still going to be in front arc. It turns out I was not in front arc if I had done it. And I wasn't sure if I was going to be in close. And uh, I know I have uh, the victories range bands up, but I did check. This was just in close. After it had moved up here, it might not have been. But even still, the plan of keeping the Venators alive and killing the victory should have taken Paramount, throwing the Venator into the front of this victory was the big mistake uh, of the game, I believe. Um... So if I had gone in this position and done my normal turn here at one, the Venator, this is fat Venator, still would have had a nice fat shot here. Uh, I probably would have had like a three red dice and maybe a 
blue red out the side i probably could have chipped the uh victory down and all i would have had to deal with is a round of um side shot and then side shot again and i mean the hies still would have hurt um but i don't think i would have gone down to like the five hull i was i might have lost some shields been down one but i uh, when Bale died, Bale still had an engineering dial on his card himself. So, like, there's a bunch more repairing that could have been done. Tokens to grab off of Resolute. Uh, if Bale gets up here and survives, he only needs to contend with the squads. And if he sends squads in, like, this is double blue with LTT. After a turn or two, we can force, like, Vader or Jonas away just due to the fact that they might die. So... I think this is the real key of the battle going back, um, something that I would have changed. Uh, and I think it might have netted me a small uh, win here. It's hard to say, you know, how everything else lines up. But I believe if I had done this, um, then the Venator, or this victory still has to go for its turn. This IC still has to go to its turn. So it's hard to say where stuff lands. But with me going first, this Venator should have never been in, like, the front arc of either one of these ships at least maybe the isd2 but only at red range um and i think this might have been the way to turn uh this into a small victory because obviously i would have been contesting stations uh the same still and i might have ended up with actually executing the plan i had wanted but Regardless, it was a great game against Paul. Paul is a great opponent. It's a great win to him. Uh, I think he said this was his first pod game he did, so good luck to him in the rest uh, of the pod. Uh, this <laughs> fleet is very, very um, powerful out the front arcs, so uh, so much firepower. It basically does what my fleet does, only at long and medium range, <laughs> and more consistently. So... Um, Thank you all for watching. Thanks for the recap. Let me know if you see anything I should have done differently uh, in the comments. Anyway, till the next video, you all take care.